This video covers Power SDR, KE9NS version 2.8.0, and the SO2R functions of the Flex 5000 with the second receiver. <clears throat> so in this example, I'm just for for ease, I'm showing how to use um, two instances of WSJTX, but you could run in, you know anything you want. It's it's uh, has really nothing to do with uh, WSJTX. So the VAC, I open up the VAC, and you can see I've got a voice meter banana, virtual audio cables. Uh, VAC2, I'm using these DAX virtual audio cables that come with Smart SDR when you install, uh, when you install Smart SDR. <clears throat> and then the CAT control. So this this is this instance here is the normal instance you would be you, you would choose when you're running um, WSJTX. <clears throat> the radio here's how I configured the radio. COM18 matches up with COM19 here. I, I labeled it WSJTX, and anything it sends to the VFOA goes to VFOA. No need to do uh, any split operation. It's automatic. Uh, here's the virtual audio channels, and then I uh, report the QSO so it'll go into my logging program. Now this one here, I saved another copy of it, and I gave it a different name, and in the settings, and I've got some of this on my website anyways, uh, the radio, it's similar to the other one except I'm using COM23 which is paired up with COM22 RX2 VFOB this is a special port it takes anything that a PC program would normally think it's communicating with VFOA and it actually is communicating with VFOB including transmit when it tries to transmit it'll actually bring the transmit over to VFOB and it'll bring it back to VFOA when it's done Same thing with reporting, so that it logs the contact. And I've got both VACs enabled. So now, in this case, I'm running, this is instance two, and then I'm using JT Alert. JT Alert automatically knows, and it, this is number two, this is instance number one. You just launch JT Alert automatically, it keeps track, so you don't have to do anything. And in this case, on the antenna panel, I'm running the SO2R configuration, which allows me to do a transmit antenna for a receiver 2. So when this clicks over to this, it's going to use antenna 1. Over here, it's using antenna 3. In my case, antenna 1 is the G5RV for 40 meters. Uh, and antenna 3 is my tri-band Mosley TA-33 Jr. on top of the house. Now, the, I can't use the built-in antenna tuner because I'm going to be going between uh, VFOA and B transmitters, and so the tuner would kick out because you can only tune it for one or the other, but not both. That's not something I've worked in the code, so it's uh, it, you can tune it for one or the other, but not both. So you have to have an external tuner. I'm not using an amplifier in this case, but uh, if I want to click on, so it flips over to uh, VFOB, it's transmitting. I was late at, late at the game there when I clicked on it. Let it come back around. So it should call again. And I can also make a call on this side. And then this will be a call on the VFOA <coughs> using my beam.
pick me up. You notice uh, WSJTX is automatically shifting. It's not really necessary, but uh, it's automatically shifting the VFO during transmit. I don't want to try transmitting now on the VF on the second receiver. That would make that would make a mess. Okay, so log the contact. This will go into my log book. And as soon as I'm done transmitting, if I see something over on this side, I can try. Back to transmitting on um, 40 meters. Unfortunately, my SWR is a little high on the, uh, the antenna in this portion of the band. And like I said, I, I still need to work on the code to uh, allow the tuner to uh, reconfigure for both the FOA and B on the fly. I made it anyways. Minus 14. To Delaware. Again, I can log the contact. They automatically go into my logging program. And that's it.